Chapter 3.5 is on linear functions as mathematical problems, so namely word problems. So this first problem, as you drive home from a football game, the number of kilometers you are away from home depends on the number of minutes that you've been driving. So you know that the number of kilometers depends on the number of minutes. So kilometers is going to be the dependent variables and minutes is going to be the independent variable. So assume that the distance varies linearly with time. So it's going to be a linear function. Suppose that you are 11 kilometers from home when you've been driving for 10 minutes. So you know that that will give you the point of 10, 11, and 8 kilometers away when you've been driving for 15 minutes. So that'll give you the point 15, 8. So you use those two points later. So part A asks you to define the variables for distance and time and sketch a graph. So D will be our distance in kilometers. And T will be our time in minutes. And then to graph, we draw our axes. And you, we have the two points of 10, 11, and 15, 8, and then we can draw the graph through them, which looks like that. Part B says find the particular equation expressing distance in terms of time. And if you remember, we have the two points 10, 11, and 15, 8. And so we, in order to write the equation, we already have our two points, but now we need our slope. So in order to find slope, the slope equation is the change in y over the change in x. So the change in y can be calculated by doing 8 minus 11. And then the change in x is 15 minus 10. So then we get negative 3 fifths. So now that we have the slope, we can then plug it into our point slope equation. So d minus 8 because that's, we're going to use this point to write, equal the slope negative 3 fifths t minus 15. And then let's write it into slope intercept form. So d minus 8 equals negative 3 fifths t plus 9. So d equals negative 3 fifths t plus 17. And that's your equation. Part C is asking us to predict your distance from home when you've been driving for 20 and 25 minutes. So what that's saying is find D when T equals 20 and when T equals 25. So when T equals 20, D, we're going to use our equation that we found in the step above. So D equals negative 3 fifths T, but we'll plug in 20 plus 17. And when you simplify that, you get 5, but distance is in kilometers, so 5 kilometers. So you're 5 kilometers from home. And similarly, when T equals 25, you plug it into the equation. So D equals negative 3 fifths times 25 plus 17, and that equals 2. So you're 2 kilometers from home. Part D is asking you, so when were you 7 kilometers from home? So find T when D equals 7. So to do that, you plug in 7 for D. So 7 equals negative 3 fifths T plus 17, and you want to solve for t. So you move the 17 over, so negative 10 plus negative 3 fifths t, and then solve for t. So t equals 50 thirds, and t is expressed in minutes. So e, 
what does the distance intercept equal and what does it represent in the real world? So the distance intercept is when time equals zero. So the distance intercept is 17 kilometers. And so at that stating, is, it is your starting position. It is how far away from home you were when time was zero. So namely the distance between the stadium and your house. F is what is the time intercept and what does it represent in the real world. The time intercept occurs when distance equals zero. So you plug that into our equation. So zero equals negative three fifths t plus 17. So three fifths t equals 17. So t equals 85 thirds minutes. And that represents how long it took you to get home. So how long it takes to get home. So it takes 85 thirds minutes to make the distance between where you are and your house is zero. So how long it takes you to get home. So G asks, in what domain does this linear function give you reasonable answers? So which for which values of x, that is the time, does the function apply? And it applies when t is positive. So when 0 is greater or less than t, it's greater or less than 85 thirds. And so basically, the linear function would not apply for a negative time, because you don't know what you're doing before you leave for home, or the problem doesn't provide what it is. And so the linear function would not tell you how far you are from home for a negative time. So part H is on what are the units of slope? And then based on these units, what do you suppose the slope represents in the real world? And what is the significance of the fact that the slope is negative? So if you remember, slope or m is delta y over delta x and y is the distance and x or t is the time and the units of distance are kilometers and the units of time are minutes so the units are kilometers per minute and does that look familiar? Because the slope would represent, in kilometers per minute, your speed. Your speed. And the negative slope, so the slope represents your speed. And the slope is negative because the distance is decreasing. So you have a negative d over a positive t, which gives you a negative number. And it's negative because you're decreasing the distance, therefore getting closer and closer to your house. So it makes sense that it's negative. So one more practice problem. So the number of feet of cable needed for an elevator depends on the number of stories in the building it serves. Suppose that C equals 20S plus 5, where C is the number of feet of elevator cable and S is the number of stories. So this is the main piece of information you need, which is the equation. So part A says, how do you know that C varies linearly with S? And you know that because the equation of C equals 20S plus 35 is a linear equation, so you know it varies linearly. Part B is how much cable is needed for a 29-story building. So you know that S equals 29. 
So you can plug this into your equation. C equals 20 times your S value, 29 plus 35. So C, the cable, you need 6, 15, and then feet. So you need 615 feet for a 29-story building. Part C is how tall is the building that needs 375 feet of cable? C equals 375. And you're just going to plug that into your equation. So 375 equals 20s plus 35. And you solve for s. So 340 equals 20s. S equals 17. And s is the units are stories. So the building is 17 stories tall. Part D is asking, what does the slope represent in the real world? And the slope is your delta cable over delta stories, and the units are feet over stories. So it's the number of feet of cable needed per needed sorry needed per story of the building so it's how much each story needs of cable part e asks what does the c intercept equal and why do you suppose that it's greater than 0 so the c intercept you plug in 0 for s and you get c intercept 35 and so, 35 feet. But there's no, the problem is, is that there's no story, so why do you still need 35 feet of cable? And it's because there is probably a fixed cable length. That is needed regardless of whether or not there are stories. And that's for in order for there to be an elevator, there has to be this much of cable before you can even worry about the stories. So part F is asking you to write a suitable domain for the linear function. There is no correct answer for this problem, but there is wrong answers. There are wrong answers. So a suitable domain could be two stories, three stories, four stories, five stories. Um, the only things you need to know, the things that you need to have, is the needs to be needs to be multiple stories. You cannot start at one because you you won't have an elevator in a one story building. Um, and you have to have whole numbers. So you can't say from two to five, because that implies that two and a half is a suitable domain, but you're not gonna have a two and a half story building. So, but the end point is arbitrary. You can go all the way up to 100, you can stop at five, you can stop at four, however far you want. 